Welcome. Today I'm gonna show you how I do facet bowls. They're like normal bowls, except I've cut out these edges on the side, on the outside of the bowl. And uh, I do it because I like the sort of uneven shape of them, but also because it makes the glaze break. Maybe you can see it a little bit closer here. It makes the glaze break in uh, such a beautiful way when you do it like this. The inside is very much like a normal bowl, and uh, it's just the outside that is different. So, let's get on with it. I'm going to be using a dark uh, clay for this. It's almost black. And the reason I do that is it's a nice, it's a very nice clay to throw, but also because I'm going to leave the lower part of it unglazed. And this particular clay, or this particular clay, uh, turns out a very beautiful uh, black color. So you want to choose, if you want to do it like this, you want to choose a clay that looks good without being glazed. It's some of the clays that I'm using are very nice, good to throw. Glazes look nice on them, but uh, they don't look so nice unglazed. So. This one looks really good. I'm going to start out with a little more than I would usually do for a small bowl because you're going to cut out a lot. So I'm going to start out in this case with 700 grams. Some of them a little bit bigger, I make, maybe make it with a kilo. But it's going to be trimmed down a lot. You're going to cut out something. And if you're going to do like I do here, trim the foot, it's also going to take out a, a quite a lot. So you end up with, with a light bowl. And that's what I like. You know, things that you keep in your hand and that you eat or pass around should be sort of light, even though it is stoneware. So the first thing you do is you basically throw a cylinder. The only difference is that it needs a rather thick wall because you're going to cut out something. If it's too thin, then it's just going to break. It has to be a little bit higher than what you're going to end up with because you're going to unfold the walls and it's going to sink a little bit. So um, you can undercut it a bit if you like me, like a, a, an arrow foot. So you can, you can do that already because then you can sort of um, use the clay in, um, in your walls. So now we have the basic uh, shape of it. It is flaring out just a little bit. It's going to help me with the shaping. Um, I will be um, scraping the sides because I want them to be as dry as possible. Um, some potters uh, will actually blow dry it a little bit before you cut. I don't think that's necessary. I just scrape them. One of the things I like to do is to make a, a small um, and then in the, in the top, as you can see here, it creates like a double its uh, rim. I kind of like that. So to do that, I have just used a credit card. I have a very sharp corner and it works perfectly. And so first I'm going to flatten the top. And then it has to be really wet to do this um, because otherwise it's going to crumble up. And then I'm basically just going to scrape off 
part of it. Remember to remove excess clay. And make sure that the inner rim is uh, thick enough because that's going to limit how much you can expand um, the bowl. Um, if it's too thin, it's going to break off. So already here, we are scraping off um, some clay. Before I cut the sides, uh, I like to do a little bit of undercutting. It's because I will have it like that in the end. And also by, by doing that, it sort of makes it easier for me to, uh, to, to do the cutting. Um, so I like to do that. To do the facet cuts, I use this uh, cheese cutter. I like that. Can you see it? Yeah. It's just a very easy and cheap tool to use. You can also just use a wire or something. I just think this is easier to use. So now the tricky part is to cut it. You need to cut it like in one go. If you stop up, it will be uneven. Maybe you like that, but I like to have it like a clean cut. Um, so all the way through in one cut. Some people mark it up to make it completely uh, correct sizes and stuff. I don't care about that. Uh, I just cut them freehand. There was a mist. You see here, it got a little bit uneven, but it doesn't really matter. Make sure to save the clay that you cut off because that can be just wedged up and used again. So, now we have it cut out all the way around. And don't worry too much about these little uh, you know, things here. If you try and remove it now, it will just smudge in. And I kind of like having these little leftovers. You can remove it once you are uh, done. So now it's time to expand it. And as you see now, we kind of disturbed a little bit. So I like to just make sure that it's still sort of round. One of the problems with, these, uh, with this technique is that you very often end up with too much clay here. Up here, you're going to expand it, but down here, um, it won't be so much expanded. Unless you do what I do. I start out in the bottom, which is actually very illogical in a way. But I start out doing just a little bit of expanding there. Not too much. If you make it too much, it's going to collapse. And then I'm going to go to the top. I'm just going to start out with a sponge because the difficult part here is that um, you have some thick areas where it sticks out on the corners of the cut, but in here, this is the thin areas and up here um, in the double rim. So that's the limitation of how much uh, you can expand. So I'm still going to start out with the sponge, doing a little bit more. And at some point, I'm going to move on with a sort of a flexible rib 
this is like a semi flexible rib um, because that way I can sort of bend it into the uh, bottom of the bowl and get a consistent and rounded um, I like it to be completely round and nice on the inside and have this chaotic uh, thing on the outside um, uh, what contrast I kind of like be very careful how much you pressure uh, you can of course put a little more pressure at the bottom but on the sides um, it's very fragile If you're not sure how much further you can go, you can look at the rim. It's not breaking up yet, but at some point, uh, the thin areas is going to uh, crack up, which can be okay. But um, if you like to keep it more or less as a whole rim, you should stop before that. The other thing is, as I mentioned, the thin areas are here. Here they're thick and here they're thin. So the limit of how much you can ex expand it is this. And I still have a little bit to go. Just gonna clean it up to see that it's um, completely even on the inside. But as you see now, the rim is starting to jump up and down a little bit because it's gonna get lower here and higher here. I like that. It's sort of the quality of this sort of uh, bowl. Yeah, now it's getting very thin. Ah, it's, I mean, you probably have to, at some point, try and expand it too much and see when it, when it, when it breaks for you. That's maybe the only way you learn. <laughs> um, So yeah, now I can't do it anymore.
So, that's it. That's the first one. I'm going to do a few more and then you can watch how I do that. I made a couple of uh, the facet balls uh, yesterday and they're now ready to trim. They're sort of soft leather hearts. I like to trim them on the soft side, some people like them to be more firm, but I like it this way. So now I'm first going to cut it off. I think most potters actually cut them off right after they throw them. I found that it's, it works better for me to let them just dry to this soft leather heart stage before I cut them off. So like that, just gonna put it aside here and uh, remove my bed. Now I'm ready to trim it. As I mentioned, I'm not gonna trim it on the inside because I think it already looks great there. Um, you could do it if you like. I don't need to do that. Um, and of course, on the outside of a part of it, you can't trim it. So the only thing I'm gonna trim is the foot. Turning it around, you have to be very careful because of this double-edged um, rim. This part is very, very thin. So when you put it down, be careful not to do it too hard. That's another reason to do it on a soft side because it's a little more flexible. But if you're not careful, you, you will break that beautiful uh, double rim that you just made. So be very careful with that. After you send it your pot, I like to secure them with um, a bit of clay. But be careful when you do it, press down on the bed, not into the walls, because then you're going to break them. So we're just going to press down and just let it sit there. That's going to hold it. I will usually use three uh, pieces. That's enough to keep it in place. Just press it hard down here so it doesn't move. And then the last one here. The first part of it, I need to remove a lot of clay at the corner here. 
because that's that's what I said. It's problem with this kind of ball. I can't really move this clay up because I can't touch the outside when I'm trimming it. So the first thing is I want to mark how how wide I want the foot. For this particular ball, I know that they're about seven eight uh, centimeters on the inside. So that's what I'm going to match on the outside. So I'll measure this with my caliber. So I'm just going to mark that. This is also a good way to get a consist consistent um, size of the foot of your balls, which will make them stack uh, easier. To remove all this clay, it's very bumpy, <laughs> a little bit difficult. So I like to use this mud tool. Um, it's very good, it's very sharp, it's a very special sort of tool, um, but it works really well for this. Now, because it's so bumpy on the outside, if you start from the outside moving in, you're not going to get a circular um, connection. So I'm actually going to start from the top. I'm going to move my way down there. That way, it will still be completely circular here, which is important when I want to trim the inner side of the foot. Make sure that you lean onto your to your um, to your wheel and get a good handle on them. Don't let your fingers move with the pot. Be consistent. So it is a little bit difficult, more than with most other pots, but um, just be strong. <laughs> Hold on. It's up to you how much of that corner clay you want to remove. I want to go down a little bit further. Um, I mean, if you look at this part, um, I like I like um, have this uh, this black piece down there, and only have like the the, the texture, uh, the facets uh, in the upper part. So, something like that. Before I start to trim the inner part of the foot, I like to even it out. And this tool is also great for that, the other end. And again, make sure that you, that you lean on the wheel and um, try and just hold it steady. When I do the inner part of the foot, I like to use this uh, simple, small um, loop tool just to mark where the inner part of the foot is going to be. I start with just a small line. That way I can also see that it's, that it's even, even thickness all the way around. And I go a little bit deeper. And now I have a, a guide for how far to move out. Then I do the inner side of it. And I start with the corner um, and just move uh, uh, small pieces of clay, and one layer at a time. There are many different aesthetic ideas about how the foot should be, but I like it to sort of have the follow the curve of the of the outside of the bowl, so it's a little bit deeper. Uh, at the edges and a little high in the middle, so you kind of get that same roundness. I think it looks good. Of course, it's a matter of taste. Especially when you're working with um, with a pot that is uh, on the soft side of leather hard, you need to be very careful when you when you trim the foot, because if you push too hard, you're going to go through it. Um, so I'm just going to take small slices away, like a layer at a time. So 
So the big question is, how deep can you go? <laughs> it's a question of experience, but also you can tap it and uh, it's going to change the sound when it gets thinner. I think I still have quite a bit there. I don't know if you can hear it, but now the sound actually changed a little bit. So I don't have much more to go. I'm just going to take some of the edge here. The last thing I'm going to do, not the very last thing, but I'm going to use this uh, tool. It's a little longer, wider and very uh, sharp just to make it a little more smooth. But be careful at this point because now the button is thin and if you apply too much pressure, you're gonna go through. So this is just to make it a little more smooth. This is a highly grocked uh, clay, so it won't be completely like smooth, but just to make it even and nice. I'm also gonna just make sure that the foot is completely even. I'm going to use my fingers to just um, make it nice. I'm going to use this uh, very flexible rubberish <laughs> rib and um, just to smoothen out the sides here and the edge of the foot. You don't want to make it too sharp because if it's too sharp it very easy um, crack off or, or, or break off when, when people use it. Um, so I like to make it just slightly rounded, that makes it stronger. I'm also going to do the inside, but very, very lightly. Just to kind of burnish it a little bit and uh, make it look nice. I like to have this very uh, smooth surface on this uh, lower part as a contrast uh, to the textured uh, part of the, the facet uh, cut. So the last thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to use uh, my Marcus Mark, uh, these ones I got made uh, by a girl in uh, Ukraine. Uh, I have a video about um, where you can make them. They're actually very cheap and they're uh, made in, 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 in steel. So they're very, very strong, last forever. So that's it. And now, yeah, well, you can't feel that, but now the wall is actually even all the way up. So it's thin down here as well, so you don't have that thick edge. And I think the weight of the bow is going to be good. So, um, and a deep foot. It's a matter of taste what you like, but I think this is nice. They, they are a little more heavy than, than other balls because you have the thick edges uh, or... or I mean, where, where, where you made the cut, it's rather thin, but then, then where you have the, the high points, it is thicker. It has to be. I mean, if you want textures, some of it is going to be thick, some of it is thinner. That's just the nature of, um, nature of a bowl like this. But that's good. I'll leave it and dry. I'll turn it upside down um, because it's more dry now on the rim than it is on the foot. And I want to have it dry as even as possible. That's it for now. Um, I finished uh, the bowls from yesterday and uh, the ones I made today are going to dry probably until tomorrow. It's usually 12, 20 hours and they're good. And uh, then of course I will piss fire them and glaze them. I think I'm going to use this uh, wonderful glaze that I like very much. 
it's a Timiko gold. Um, I can put a link to the recipe if you like. I mixed it up myself, but the recipe pub is public. Um, and um, I hope that you enjoyed this short wheel throwing video. If you did, please subscribe, share, like, write a comment if you have any questions um, or maybe some tips that I didn't, didn't include here. So I just hope to see you soon again. Have a great day.